In this video, I'm going to compare the efficiency of an MPPT versus a PWM. I've also got two 100 watt solar panels and two fully drained batteries. Let me take you to the back to see the test setup. For the first test, we are going to see which charge controller is going to reach 100 watt hours first. It's better to test the total energy harvested instead of a single measurement. Today is a sunny day. I have the charge controllers mounted here. Both are connected to a single solar panel. Then the wires are going to an energy meter and then they are going to an individual battery. So let's connect the PWM first to give it a little head start. The controller is converting energy into the battery and let's now connect the MPPT. And the PWM is now putting in 63 watts and the MPPT is slowly ramping up. It's now at 3 watts and now it's 73 watts. So let's come back when the energy meter, one of the energy meter says 100 watt hours. The test is finished and we got a clear winner. Unsurprisingly, it was the MPPT. Let's check the numbers. 102.2 watt hours. And for the PWM, 97 watt hours. So now let's calculate the difference in efficiency. We take the highest and then the lowest. That's a difference of only 5 watt hours. And then divide it by the lowest again times 100. And we have an energy uh, efficiency difference of 5.4%. I have to mention that these conditions are ideal for the PWM. So if you have a larger solar panel, it wouldn't be as efficient. Let's check the power going from the controller into the battery. For the MPPT, we have 83.4 watts and for the PWM we have 81 watts. Let's measure the output coming from the solar panels into the controllers to see if they're identical. I will test the PWM first. And this panel got 87.8 watts. So let's now test the panel going into the MPPT. And that's 88 watts. So we can say they're identical. If you look at this video from my test the next day, the panel voltage under load has dropped from its rated VMP of 18.8 volts down to 15.33 volts. Once the maximum power point was found, it settled down to 15.33 volts and 5 amps going into the MPPT. And it gives us a power rating of 76.6 .6 watts. And if you look at the bottom of the screenshot, the battery is at 13.1 volts and the current going from the MPPT into the battery is 5.6 amps. That's a total of 73.36 watts. That gives us an efficiency of 95.8%. Notice with an MPPT the current is increased. Well, that's not the case with the PWM. For the PWM, we also use the same maximum power point P 
because that's the maximum power we can draw from the solar panel. But a PWM works differently. It doesn't convert the extra power into more current like the MPPT does. It simply chops off the voltage above the battery voltage and the current stays the same. That means any voltage above the battery's voltage is lost. So the maximum potential power we can harvest from the solar panel under load is 76.6 watts. The battery is at 13.1 volts and the current just gets passed along because the PWM doesn't increase the current on the output. And we have a power output to the battery of 65.5 watts. Now if we calculate the efficiency we get 85%. That's very high for a PWM. So this is why people say that a PWM works better in high temperatures. Because the hotter the panel gets, the more its voltage drops and it comes closer to the battery voltage. So in this case, the voltage difference between 15.33 volts and the battery voltage of 13.1 volt is only 2.23 volts. And that's why we saw these watt hours figures so close to each other during the test. In my previous video on PWM efficiency, I made a mistake. I said the panel's VMP was 18 volts. But that was the rated value, not the actual value under load. That video was on a spring day, where the temperatures were quite cool. I repeated this test and I used a solar panel that has been standing in the shade for a while. Then I put it in the sun and immediately measured the voltage under load. And the voltage I got was 16.5 volts. That's a more realistic figure for a spring day. If we multiply it by the same 4 amps, we get 66 watts instead of the previously 72 watts. The output to the battery was 49 watts and if we recalculate the efficiency we get 74%, not the 68% I said before. This really goes to show how important the temperature of the solar panel is when running these tests. The panel on the colder day was 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius, a typical spring day and the voltage was 16.5 volts. That gave us an efficiency of 74%. Then on the hot summer day, the panel voltage was 131 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius. The voltage at the terminals of the PWM were 15.33 volts under load. That gives us an efficiency of 85%. The efficiency difference is not because the PWM suddenly got better, but because the panel voltage dropped due to the heat. So to recap, PWM efficiency goes up on hot days, because the panel voltage gets closer to battery voltage. The MPPT still wins in all cases, but the gap gets smaller in hot conditions. The MPPT is better when you use a higher voltage solar panel or a series string of panels. And in my opinion, if you have more than 200 watts of solar, an MPPT is worth the investment. So that's why two tests with the same controller and the same panel can give you very different results when the temperature of the solar panel changes. If you learn something new, Give the video a like and I think you might like this video next. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.